Some people have all the luck when it comes to finding hidden goodies. Gold, jewels, and treasure. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie treasure hunters. What happened to Flint's gold, says you? Thin Guns Cave, says I. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at those movie characters that seem to have been endowed with the specific talent of rooting out treasures. Take it up! These characters excel at treasure hunting, where the average person would most likely just cut their losses and give up. We'd like to at least hear about a hidden treasure somewhere. That might be cool. That's the location of the treasure. <laughs> Number 10, Lara Croft, the Tomb Raider franchise. Miss Croft, I think you're trying to cheat me out of my little ray of sunshine. Why would I try and cheat you out of anything now? I need you to get the piece so I can steal it from you later. She's English, she's an anthropologist, she's an heiress, and she could probably kill you if you stood in her way. <laughs> Kinda like a female Indiana Jones, but in a tighter shirt. So, pretty much touch anything and you get your head chopped off. For all of her survival skills and her cool British accent, she also knows her way around a dangerous tomb or two. Not to mention, Tracking down devices that can control time and the actual Pandora's box sure beat rubies and diamonds, at least for some people. Well, that is a secret. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. All right, now you're starting to scare me. I'm starting to scare myself. Number nine, Rick O'Connell and Evelyn Carnahan, The Mummy Franchise. Sounds good. Sounds too good. What's a catch? Supposedly it's the resting place of Anubis's army. Yeah, you see? I knew there's a catch. There's always a catch. Being a professional adventurer must be fun. <laughs> it probably beats sticking around in the States during Prohibition. <laughs> the map, the map, I forgot the map! Relax, oh. I'm the map. It's all up here. Pair Rick and his thrill-seeking lifestyle with Evie, a specialist in Egyptian history. And you've got all kinds of treasure hunting possibilities. It'd make sense that these two would find each other, and of course, they awaken a mummy, fight a scorpion king, and battle the dragon emperor. All of whom have been dead for thousands of years. But that's just par for the course. Would you like to know what heaven looks like? Later. Oh, please. When I start off to find somebody, I find them. That's why they pay me. Number eight, Blondie, Angel Eyes, and Tuco, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Confederate gold was a hot ticket back during the Civil War, and there was enough of a stash to send these three on a serious hunt through the Wild West. The money's on the other side of the river. One of them is relatively good, one of them likes to kill for fun, and we guess that makes the other one ugly. Kind of harsh if you ask us, but together, this trio of scoundrels lies, cheats, steals, and double-crosses their way to a fortune in Confederate gold. Are we shooting? What? Number 7. Archie Gates, Troy Barlow, and Chief Elgin, Three Kings. I still have my gold story, though. Returning the gold to Kuwait. What do you know about that? I think it's in some bunker somewhere. They're American soldiers with their eyes on some of Saddam's stolen gold. Talking about millions in Kuwaiti bullion. You mean them little cubes you put in hot water and make soup? In fact, finding the gold was the easy part. Surviving afterwards seemed to be the biggest challenge. Let's just stick to the plan. The plan is for the gold, right? Hold on. We can help these people first and then we'll be on our way. No, we can't. This is not what we're here for. Let's go. If these three had just taken the loot and run, they would have made out like kings. But they also clearly had hearts of gold, risking their lives and their loot to save Iraqi rebels. If only international relations were this straightforward. Many nations, many nations, Dorsu. working together. Ma'masu. Tell him, Chief. Yes, we're united. United. Mitahdin. George Bush. George Bush wants you. Gold changing a man's soul so he ain't the same kind of a guy as he was before finding it. Guess it all depends on the man. Number six, Dobbs, Curtin, and Howard the treasure of the Sierra Madre. That part gold. Prospecting for a huge sum of gold can test a man's strength. Howard, come on, look, look. Finding a life-changing amount of gold can test a man's character. That's when the trouble starts. 
Me now, I wouldn't mind a little of that kind of trouble. These three are put to the ultimate test after locating a huge gold vein in the Sierra Madre Mountains. <laughs> You're so dumb, you don't even see the riches you're treading on with your own feet. <laughs> Which should be a fairly easy matter of recovering as much gold as possible and re-entering society as wealthy men becomes complicated by greed, paranoia, and pursuing bandits. Throw that old light on over here. We'll pick it up and go on our way. You go anyway without my gun and go quick. Number five, Benjamin Franklin Gates, the National Treasure Franchise. Maps have legends, maps have keys. If you're named after a founding father and you're not hunting for treasure somewhere in the US, you're doing something wrong with your life. That's right. In this instance, the key is having friends and family in the treasure hunting biz as well to really up the ante. You know, I chose this estate because in 1812, Charles Carroll yeah, met- Yeah, someone that did something in history and had fun. It's great, wonderful. <laughs> Throw in some Freemason lore and an epic scavenger hunt, and there's no way you won't end up with both the girl and the goods. I'm oh, sorry, I, I dropped you. I had to say the declaration. No, don't be. I would have done exactly the same thing to you. Really? Which, in the case of this hunter, means the Templar treasure and the Book of Secrets. Jack, uh, we have the jewel. Number four. Jack T. Colton, Romancing the Stone and the Jewel of the Nile. Half a year's work just flew south for the winter, all right? What happens when the exotic berg smuggling business gets a little stale? You go treasure hunting, naturally. Jesus Christ, we're in a lot of trouble. Understatement of the year, asshole. Well, if a beautiful woman is offering you money for your help, it would just be rude to decline. Will you take 375 in traveler's checks? American Express? Of course. Not a deal. We figure searching the jungle for massive emeralds or scouring the Arab world for the jewel of the Nile takes precedence after all. As long as Omar have the jewel, nothing can stop him. Look, I'm going on the boat. You guys can do what you want. What might you call yourself, mate? Jim! Number three, Jim Hawkins, Treasure Island. You climb trees and not goats, you will. And when you've a mind to do a bit of exploring, just you ask old John and he'll put up a bit of grub for you to take along. Jim's tale has been retold many ways, even with Muppets. Jim Hawkins, eh, Jimmy? If I had it, my friends and I wouldn't be here serving you rum, Mr. Bones. That's right. We'd be out searching for that treasure. One minute, he's stuck running the family business with his mom, and the next, he's going up against the likes of Long John Silver and hunting down a fortune in buried treasure. Easy, Jim. Tis all in good fun. It's all fun and games until the crew of a pirate ship is determining his fate. But at least he's making friends and trying to find silver bullion. Can you keep that many secrets? Aye, aye, sir. Ah, <laughs> you're a good one, Jim. Number two. The Goonies. But what if? You guys, just what if this map could lead to one eyed Willie's rich stuff? Maybe. Then we wouldn't have to leave the Goondocks. Come on, right, Mike. I don't, wanna I don't want to go on any more of your crazy Goonie adventures. There are two things you can do as a preteen in Oregon. You can lay the groundwork for starting your own vegan bakery in Portland, or you can go on a last ditch treasure hunt. Ye intruders beware. If you choose the treasure hunt route, then you stand to find an immense bounty of stolen pirate booty in your not-so-friendly neighborhood underground cavern. What are you staring at? Let's go, load up. Anything you can put in your pocket? Mikey, right, Mikey, that. What? That's Willie's. In fact, you'll find so much treasure that you can save your entire neighborhood from foreclosure. Yay for family-friendly windfalls. <sighs> Before we unearth our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Look, El Dorado, the city of gold. This could be our destiny, our fate. Miguel, if I believed in fate, I wouldn't be playing with loaded dice. No, don't. The diamonds belong to the mountain. What are you doing? I'm doing a Walter Houston dance from Treasure the Sierra Madre. Oh, yeah. He found the gold and he did the dance. I loved it. That only a true haddock can discover the secrets of the unicorn. I don't 
don't remember anything about anything. Number one. Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones franchise. If you thought being a college professor and an archaeologist were supposed to be boring, clearly you've never hung with an archaeology professor on summer break. If they're anything like good old Indy Jones, they're constantly battling Nazis, thwarting evil cults, and reconciling with their fathers. Junior! In there, he might also manage to find love and some pretty impressive goods. All in all, archaeology is looking like a pretty cool field to be in from where we stand. All your life has been spent in pursuit of archaeological relics. Inside the Ark are treasures beyond your wildest aspirations. You want to see it open as well as I. Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite movie treasure hunter? Go ahead, go ahead, throw it if you did, you'd never leave this wilderness alive. Without me, you two would die here more miserable than rats. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Ah!